days of the Emperor, you leave a prince by the name Hu, Hu Yi, who was a mighty hero and a good archer. Once ten suns rose together in the sky and shone so brightly and burned so fiercely that the people on earth could not endure them. So the Emperor ordered Hu Yi to shoot at them and Hu Yi shot nine of them down from the sky besides his bow. Hu Yi also had a horse which ran so swiftly that even the wind could not catch up with him. He mounted it to go hunting and the horse ran away and could not be stopped. So Hu Yi came to Kunlun Mountain and met the Queen Mother of Jasper Sea and she gave him the herb of immortality. He took it home with him and hid it in his room. But his wife, who was named Shang O, oh, once ate some of it. On the sly, when he was not at home, and she immediately floated up to the clouds. When she reached the moon, she ran into the castle there, and has lived there ever since as the Lady of the Moon. On the night, in mid-autumn, an emperor of the Tang Dynasty once sat at wine with two sorcerers, and one of them took his bamboo staff and cast it into the air where it turned into a heavenly bridge on which the three climbed up to the moon together. There they saw a great castle on which was inscribed the spreading horns of crystal cold. Beside it stood a cassia tree which blossomed and gave forth a fragrance lifting all the air and in the tree sat a man who was chopping off the smaller forts with an axe. One of the sorcerers said, That is the man in the moon. The Kashia tree grows so luxuriantly that in the course of time, it would overshadow all the moon radiance. Therefore, it has to be cut down once in every thousand years. Then, they entered the spreading holes the silver stories of the castle toward one above the other, and its walls and columns were all form of liquid crystal. In the walls were cages and ponds, where fishes and birds move as though alive. The whole moon world seemed made of glass, while they were still looking about them on all sides. The Lady of the Moon stepped up to them. In a white mantle and a rainbow colored gown, she smiled and said to the Emperor, You are a prince of the mundane world of dust. Great is your fortune, since you have been able to find your way here. And she called for her attendants, who came flying up on white birds and sang and danced beneath the cassia tree. A pure clear music floated through the air. Beside the tree stood a mortar made of white bread, in which a jasper rabbit ground up herbs. That was the dark half of the moon. When the dance had ended, the emperor returned to the earth again with the sorcerers and he had the songs which he had earned on the moon. Written down and sung to the accompaniment of flutes of Jasper in his pear tree garden. 